Hi, this is D.H. Dunn, and welcome to Darkest Dungeon. And I have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Life. Okay. Life. So, uh, there's so much to talk about. First off, hopefully, you just saw the super cool new intro, and boy am I happy with it, and boy was it a lot of fun to put together, and it shows just how much, hopefully, it shows how much I'm enjoying doing this. So, I hope you like it. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. Okay, so there's an entire episode you didn't see because Twitch decided to change my settings and I didn't notice it. And so I did an entire hour-long episode with no audio, no commentary. And, you know, hey, this is part of why you're here, I assume. So um, I'm redoing this episode, sort of. I'm going to use the same two teams. Um... Uh, unless somebody's tied up in uh, stress relief, in which case I'll sub somebody in. Uh, it looks like Janakis and Silne are both tied up. So I think what I'll do is I'll reverse the order. Um, I'm going to send... Basically, in the last, uh, last session, uh, I sent one team out. Uh, they did some, some good stuff. Janakis actually did an excellent job as a tank. He did fine. Then I sent the A team out, as you see here. Drew, Nima, Harab... Nima and Harab together and sell three, and they took down the fulminating prophets. Harab actually landed the killing blow. So uh, that worked out really well. Uh, what I want to do, because I already have, <laughs> I already built the credits <laughs> sequence, is I want to send these guys out on a quickie. And then I will send the other team out on, on a quickie uh, to just kind of write things up. So look, uh, medium mission, explore, 90% of rooms, still worth our time. So let's grab. Man, I'm so disappointed in all that content is lost. I created it. I'm the creator of the content and yet it's gone. All right, nothing you can do but move on. Oh, and there was an event at the end of that episode that produced life. And uh, who did that restore to life but Boren. the fifth interdictor. So I had a choice between bringing the fifth back or um, Carrox back. And even though Carrox is probably the better choice, I brought back the fifth for sentimental reasons. But, you know, hey, it's my game. I wanted to bring the fifth back, so she's back. And I may use her in this next uh, next run. That's okay, Nima. You just got us a scout. That's fine. So I'm going to try to keep this as a 45-minute run here. Uh, no, we don't want to retreat. What, are you crazy? No, I just I want to be able to see the map here, please. Thank you. So we're going to go into our first fight here. I was actually quite impressed with how well Harab and Nima worked together. Okay, we got a big boy, a stealth boy, and a stress boy. Let's fade back. I went, I set up the credits, I went to do the audio, and I'm like, why? Why am I not hearing anything? Oh, no. Hey, Drew. That's fine. Let's hit this guy to make sure that... Um, there's a minor chance that Harab can actually pull him to death. He didn't, but hopefully we can get him next turn. Nice dodge, Harab. And that was a big hit for Harab, but even Harab has a decent amount of health. So normally I would not take this team on this mission, but I already I already made the credits, so I don't want to redo them. Nice hit. Uh, let's give Harab a heal. And let's... I'm gonna say... Hex? That's actually the attack Harab killed the boss with. The fulminating property killed him with Hex. Literated. He had one hit point left. Cell 3 did most of the damage in that fight. But they, they all did well. I did realize that I didn't have anybody who could hit the back easily, so we just started pounding the pews, and that took care of things. Alright, well, that's one way to do it, I guess. 
just bummed because, you know, this sets my whole night back. Uh, you know, usually I'm done streaming by like 8, 8.30, and then I spend the next two hours or so editing, and which I enjoy. It's not a bad thing. And uh, now it's like, it's almost 9 o'clock, I'm filming, so, or recording. I guess that's, uh, you know, how it works sometimes. Contents, you know who they are for. They're yours. Okay, let's let's head out. Check the sack. We need all the money we can get. And the goal here is to just make as many sixes as possible. So I had to let somebody go to make room for the fifth. So I got rid of a Darsa, who was another jester. We had never actually even used him. So, I feel like that. That was an okay, okay choice. Decimated. Go ahead and pull Harab. Now, my, uh, my buddy Greg has already gone into the darkest dungeon. So, I have a little bit of an advanced idea. I, he totally offered to not tell me anything. I asked a few questions. He answered them. Um... So I know a little bit more about what to expect. It's rough. It sounds really rough. Uh, even with all sixes, I think you need optimized sixes with all the best trinkets and all the best traits. And we got a long way to go, but fortunately, I'm in no hurry to get there. Uh, tomorrow night will be episode 100, or excuse me, episode 50, but I'm ready for episode 100. Like. Maybe that's the one where we try to finish it. I, I feel like I'm just getting started with this game. I enjoy it so much. I find it so relaxing most of the time. Uh, and this is just a nice daily ritual for me. Um, I'm. This is some of the stuff that I talked about in the last recording, which no one heard. Uh, that... Uh, can you... Oh, I didn't want you to miss L3. Um... There's a YouTuber that I like a lot, Northern Lion, and um, he's, you know, what I'm doing is of a similar vibe. I think I'm, I'm trying to do my own thing, but um, he's not an expert gamer. You don't watch him for expert gameplay tips. You watch him because he's got entertaining commentary, and um, it's fun to watch him work his way through games. And there is a game that he plays every single day the game called The Binding of Isaac. I don't care for the game. I don't watch the series, but he uh, he's up to like part, I don't know, 1,200 or something on that series. So, you know, I'm not going to do 1,200 episodes of Darkest Dungeon, but I do really like playing it. I could see this going. I could see this going 100 episodes, like I said. Um, I am anxious to do XCOM as well, and I don't think I would do this in XCOM at the same time. So I think they're too similar. Drew, what the hell? Uh, I guess pets. One thing I have noticed with Cell 3 is she's great for the big hit, but um, she's not fantastic for, you know, just turn to turn to turn damage. Nima's already half stressed. I'm not happy about that. Because this is not a... Uh... Thank you, Drew, for finally hitting. This is not a... Uh... What is the word I'm looking for? It's not a medium mission. This is a short mission. Hey, let's use his stress attack. Or his stun attack. There we go. Oh, and he spoke a little Cthulhu there. Alright. Cool. Let's continue on. Go ahead and touch it. Good job. He's buffed. Extra damage. I'll take it. Okay, we gotta do 90% of rooms, so we're gonna head north. Nima's gonna do this trap. Thank you, Nima. This is... Oh, this is a, a medium mission. Okay. Um, cell 3. Go ahead and touch this. Same buff? Yeah. 
Nice. Well, then I'm in no hurry to camp. Take advantage of that. Here's another fight. Maybe Cell 3 can lunge right now and just finish that girl before she ever has a chance to do anything. That makes an argument for starting the fight with the um, Witch Doctor, whatever, what is she? Uh, with her, with Cell 3. In the uh, in the fourth spot, so that you can immediately jump out like that. I might try setting that up, because then you don't have to take two turns to set it up the first time you use it. She's got pretty high speed. She should go first a lot of the time. The grave robber. I don't know why I wanted her to be a witch doctor, but see now there isn't a lot she can do. But we might want to look for a different attack. I don't use that um, that little vial. It's like a dodge buff attack. I don't use that very often. Nemo with the D stealth. Very nice. And let's do that uh, stun again. Thank you. And now you're gone. And now you're gone. Very good. We're already out of room. I'll take uh, this instead of the milk. Alright, I'm gonna try this route. Go ahead. Alright, Drew's keeping that for himself. That's fine. I'm gonna put Cell 3 back there. Test that. Test that idea. Our first food check. I wonder if I brought enough food. Not really. That's the light. that's an the oopsie there. Safety. We could easily get two more food checks on this mission. All right, so Cell 3 could go right now and immediately erase this guy. Yes, okay, this is definitely what we're doing with Cell 3 from now on. If she just leads off fights with, you have one less guy, that's that's going to be great. Now, she does have a damage buff on right now. Good job, Drew. Hang on. Gone. Very good, very good. This is going well. So, there... <laughs> I had all kinds of great banter in the last one. And now I have to remember it. Remembering stuff at, at 9 o'clock is not my strong suit here, people. Um, I did uh, get uh, one of the final chapters of uh, Shades of the Sea done today. So we are down to about five chapters left to go. Um, it was interesting to note that Etna, Mount Etna, is, is erupting right now, quite violently, and uh, that whole story is set around Mount Etna, where at one time I lived. I was stationed in Sicily uh, for three years while I was in the Navy. Both my boys were very little while we were there. It was a very cool experience. Italians, incredibly friendly people. Very, very nice people. Understand that uh, you have to have a good work-life balance. Do the Italians? They they roll with things very in a very fun way. Uh, one thing we used to see a lot was uh, traffic jams. If there were traffic jams in in Italy, which there were a lot, a lot of them would just get out of their cars, take out little picnic baskets, break out a bottle of wine, and just start relaxing. It was very funny, very cute. We had a very, very cute Italian landlord. He spoke no English. We spoke no Italian. We still made it work. Okay, Nima, let's... Oh, it's worse. Okay, at least she didn't get stressed from that. I'm trying to see just how long I can get away with not camping. The way is lit. Because camping's going to burn clear. up some food. We require only the strength to follow it. Is it going to work again? Cell 3 going to go first? She is... She's going to lunge. 
gone. I'm loving it. What a bummer, though. <laughs> you guys missed a boss fight. You missed all kinds of crazy stuff. A bump in the night, but not for Drew. It's a good hit. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. One of the mistakes we made when we moved to uh, Italy was that we brought our American car, our big, for Italy, huge American car, and uh, holy cow. <laughs> that thing did not like the Italian roads. It didn't like all the dust in the air. You get, um, it's very, very dusty there, both from uh, the volcano, but you also get a lot of dust in the air from the Sahara that blows across the Mediterranean. Well, it used to rain this like brown rain sometimes that you would get from sand that was picked up from the Sahara Desert blown across the Mediterranean Ocean and, and onto, you know, into your rain clouds. But it was a fantastic experience. I'm very, very grateful to have had that opportunity. Let's uh, zoom out here. All right, so I like, I like this direction. I think I'm going to try to do this without camping. Even the only reason to camp, really, is to either get healing or stress relief. As long as I can keep Nima's stress under control here. Let's, uh... Should be alright. You know, I'm always an optimist. I always, I always think everything's going to work out. It means that, um... I don't spend as... I try not to spend as much time worrying about things working out as you would if you're a pessimist. Uh, but it does mean that you're probably disappointed more often than a pessimist would be. Because, you know, obviously in the real world, things don't always work out. All right, is it gonna work again? Three out of three? Oh, it didn't work that time. We have to use another character to finish it. It's still great, though. I still like it. So the uh, beret boy is going to be able to take a stress shot, which he will absolutely take at Nima. But then we will kill him. I suppose there's a chance he won't. Nope! <laughs> he did exactly what I knew he would do. 14, that's a lot. We have to prevent these things from happening. Nice job, Cell 3. I'm sure the 5th will be... Or the Cell 3 is very happy the 5th is back. They're such good friends. Sedated. Alright, guys. Let's just get this Wolverine out of the way, and then we're all set. Oh, I should have faded her back so I don't have to move her later. That's how lazy I am. The ground quakes. It does. The ground quakes a lot in Italy, I can tell you that. We, we had, uh, you know, living right... Not only living right near a volcano, living right near the tallest and most active volcano in Europe. Uh, you know, they have earthquakes there all the time. I don't actually remember that we ever went through one. Um, I don't think so. I've been through them in California. Uh, not anything horrifying, though. Um, I feel like we can skip this one, too. But I'm, good. I'm not doing the math. Hopefully I'm, I'm not wrong. Um... I did go through one earthquake in California. Uh, I was doing uh, my rounds on watch on the base. That's before I got to my ship. And I thought I was dizzy. And then I got back to the, the, the barracks and people were like, whoa, did you feel the earthquake? And I was like, I didn't even know there was an earthquake. I thought I was dizzy. <laughs> oh, I forgot to do the thing. Damn it. See, that's why you got to do it. Because otherwise you'll forget to do it. Let's try to stun this thing. 
See if we can deal with the other guys first. I think that thing has some prot to it. He certainly didn't. Got a little torch light. A little stun. Look out, Harab. Good job. Master oh, executed. another 63 from Cell 3. She's amazing. She's hit 63 so many times, I've lost count. In that, in the episode you didn't see, Janakis, of all people, just missed hitting the high scoreboard. He missed it by one point. The rarity in the fever pitch of battle. Look out! Good. No more stress for Nemo. We can't handle it. Cannot handle it. Come on, that guy was marked, Nima. You couldn't do more than that. Nima did a 22 also. Uh, she ended up needing to hit the boss. She had no other move. And she did 22 to the Fulminating Prophet, which I'm sure is the most damage she's done. And that was funny. Not as funny as Drew's boat leaving him, though. If you want a good laugh, watch um, Drew Misses the Boat episode of uh, Stranded Deep and, and watch Drew's boat just leave him. It's really, really funny. He spends all this time making this boat, puts the sail up. I forgot to have him be in the boat when he put the sail up and it just goes away. Uh, I'm gonna take a chance here. There. I'm gonna take a chance that this is our donut. Donut. Good deal. All right, got that one done. The shifted corridors and okay, trying to do a bit of an express version here today. To feel familiar. Okay. All, my life I could All right, Perilyn is moving sluggishly after a long night of drinking. Uh, so we may not use her. Janakis meditated, recovered 56 stress. Silne underwent disease treatment and cured her red plague. Okay, so I want to go to Embark and take these guys out. Bring the other guys in and try to replicate at least part of the team that we had. So that would be Janakis, Silne. Uh, can the fifth work? The fifth can kind of only work in the front spot. Um, Jang. And then I think instead of. Oh, wait. Who was it? Is it Perry? Where are you, Perry? Perry. We'll go with that. So it's the same team as before. All right, and uh, a long? No, we're not doing a long. A short? We can do a short. Short veteran. Here we go. Wait, what the hell are we bringing four of those for? Okay. Really fixing our money problem. Let's go. Oh, it's the cove, it's the cove, it's the cove. You know what I worry about in the cove? The revenge. The revenge scares the shit the out of smell me. Of rotting fish you may have noticed that. Unbearable. I will do anything to avoid the revenge. Zilne, touch that. Good job. Distress relief. I'm starting to learn curios. I'm becoming self aware. <laughs> Alright, good, good, good. Is this 90% of rooms? I didn't even look. It is 90% of rooms. Excellent. So we might get lucky. Okay, do, do, do. It's a nice, uh, nice layout, too. I think we, we have to backtrack, though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we're gonna have to do one of those. So that kind of sucks. But we'll deal with it. Okay, got a fight coming up. The match is struck. A Come on. Star is born. What are these guys doing down here? Shouldn't these guys be in, uh. They should be upstairs. Do they dive? Do they put on their diving equipment? 
Do 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 do. All right, I I as you know very much respect this fight as well because I hate slice and dice. Eradicated. Really, there aren't many fights that I go. Oh, this fight's easy. All all the fights can go bad on you, if if you make a mistake or if you get a couple bad bad rolls and they get some good rolls. Nice. I, I think the crit was on the corpse, but... Need these guys to de-stealth here. Nice crit, Harry. Blanket fire gives Perry a job. <laughs> She's the anti-blanket fire. Now, a blank blanket fire is very different from blanket party. Which, I don't even know if that's a civilian term or if that's just a military term. Blanket party is something that happens in the military as a... Uh, it's a bit like, you know, if you've seen um, A Few Good Men. I mean, it's not a code red, but it's, it's in that category of... They throw a blanket over a guy and beat the shit out of him and he doesn't know who's beating him up and it's supposed to be a disciplinary thing. It never happened to me. I never saw it happen, but I, you know, you hear about it. Navy stories. I have no end of them. Okay, Selmy, I guess you're gonna have to do this. We don't have another uh, option for you. Bam! Give them no quarter. Yeah, let's uh, zoom this out a bit. Continue on. Good job, team. We're cruising, we're cruising. This is a lot of Darkest Dungeon for me in one night. I, hey, I love it though. Bring it on. Oh, good. We have five shovels. We're ready for anything. Scout? Well, it's good we have shovels. Oh, what? Huh? Did we walk backwards? Yes. Great. That's not what I wanted. Go in. I said go that way. Another mariner. Another, Another misfortune. <laughs> Another misfortune. Yeah. I know, buddy. Tell me about it. Okay, give me a scout. Which way do we want to go? Going north. Torching up. The way is lit. Big time. The path is clear. Jan has you to open that chest. Only the strength to follow it. That's a bit on point. If you read um, Within the Hollow when you meet Jan... Jan's role in these stories changes quite a bit. Um, I like bouncing characters around in different roles. I have several characters who shift from uh, uh, companion to antagonist, a protagonist, contagonist. Uh, Tanira is probably the best example of that. Uh, but I enjoy characters who are on their own deal. Could be a fight, should have torched up. It is. It's the shocker. A stress wave on Silne, but she dodged it. And there's a party heal. Salty gouge, what happened to the shocker? I was all ready to do my joke. Everyone loves my jokes. Decimated. Well, we're not gonna see the shocker now. Do, 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 do. I am very worried about the future. Literated. Worried is the wrong word. Um, when we finally step foot in the, the actual darkest dungeon, just based on the few minor things Greg has told me, I'm I'm excited and worried at the same time. 13's a good hit. Uh, let's do an actual heal for that. Wow, nice crit, Perry. Oh, Jang! How could you miss? Annihilate. Excellent hit, Cell Knight. It's the AS ASMR song. Destroy. There we go, done. As uh, do I want to take that? Uh, so I'm going to use that. Resistance. Oh, it's trapped. Look out, Jang. Okay. I think we need one more room. Long walk to get it. 
but I don't think there's any more fights left. So to bang out two missions in 35, 40 minutes is pretty great. Oh, we had a trap rematerialize. Go ahead and get that, Jan. Good job. And uh, we don't have... I don't think we have any... Um, like mid-level bosses left, I think. Victory. We'll check this when we get back. I think we might have completed all boss fights that are not of the, you know, the highest level. We don't need to touch that. Let's not risk it. This should be our den it. Den it. There we go. Very successful. Again. You will find all manner of great and terrible things in this war. Yep, we will. Okay. Jan's up to level five. Can you feel it? Oh, the Shrieker. You know what? World and that dimension of delirium I th I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is our plan for next time. I think we're ready. I think we're going to take on the Shrieker. So let's let's look at these um, goals here. All right, so we've got the Hag Witch, 16 Pounder, Swine God, Formless Flesh, uh, Beguiling Siren, Drowned Crew, Brigand Incursion. Uh, well, we may never do the Brigand Incursion because F that. Um, so yeah. Uh, I believe all of our bosses remaining are red. But there's the Shrieker. It's a short mission against the Horrid Shrieker. It gives the Callous Talon plus 7% crit, extra disease if your torch is below 75, extra bleed if your torch is below 50, extra stress. It's not actually great, but I'd love to take a shot at it. So who would we send against the Shrieker? I mean, normally, it would be these four people right here, but um, I'm not sure. I think I need to, a little time to think about that. Obviously, I know nothing about the Shrieker. I don't know whether we have all the skills we would need to go after that. Um, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. So we could go parry. And conceivably Wanda drew in the tank spot because he's so solid in that role. And cell three. I mean, I don't like doing bosses without cell three. We can think about that. So no hints, Greg, if you're watching. No hints. Of course, I'd be devastated to lose any of these characters. So we will have to give it some thought. Um, let's just quickly go back over here. Uh, let's give Nima her stress relief. We know what she likes. We'll let her have it. Look, Nima, I'm not here to judge you. You're just very different from your book book version. <laughs> I think that's it. I don't think anybody else needs anything. All right. I th uh, oh, I did want to check one thing before I forget. The survivalist. So what does this get us? We've got 214 shields. All this does is reduce the cost. All right, I'm disappointed, but... Okay, uh, I think that's going to do it for our second uh, episode, but the first one you've heard. So um, thanks very much for watching tomorrow. The Shrieker. For our 50th episode, what could be more appropriate? Um, I'm sure it will be uh, a very nice time. So thanks very much for watching. Take care of each other. Stay safe. And I will see you next time.